Andrew Marshall, this is for you. This is a ride symbol. <laughs> this is my other ride symbol. Ride symbols are used for riding on. These are my bells. <laughs> They work nicely together. Crash. China. Gong. China, 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 China. That was my Halloween thing. China, 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 China. Bell, China, China. There you go. My name's Chris Quinlan. How's that for a Halloween start to um, Melbourne Muso's Face Chook Live? I still have this block going. Hang on a second. Welcome to Face Chook Live. Hey, Halloween. Now, Andrew Marshall, I thought I'd start with you for a bit of ambience because you asked me to take you through my symbols. 22 inch China. Beautiful. I got two. Right. Raw bell, a bit drier than this one, which is a Benny Greb Sand series. Bell, bell symbol. Crack. I've actually got four, but I've stacked two of them. The uh, 16 and 18. Gives you that sound. So then I've got a 22 inch crash ride. Oh, what a symbol that is. That's a Benny Greb one as well. Daniel L, I thought you asked me about Tom movement, but you sent me a question mark today, so I must have been dreaming, but I might as well talk about it anyway. And the other thing is I'd like to uh, thank Stephen Tocci for Iron Maiden's Trooper. He wants a little bit of a rundown on that. I can't play the whole thing, because there's a, quite a few things I want to get through. But uh, what it is is... Dun, 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 dun. Now, when you're going down all those drums, what you need to do is when you're working on them, uh, you've got to work out a way to go down. Everyone loves this. I've got my triggers on, by the way. I might turn them off. And there we go. And what goes on is uh, when you're going, the most, the most common feeling is. Oi. Okay, so there's that. Fine, no problem. Uh, but what about going back up? You have to do a left hand start, you see. In classical timpani technique, you have a thing called um, inside stick and outside stick. And come on, come on, microphone. And what you have there is when you're going down the drums, 
The right hand is on the inside. Imagine, forget that these are tom-toms, imagine these are timpani, okay, for Beethoven or Stravinsky or some, somebody like that. And uh, what goes on is as you go down, there's your inside stick and that's the outside stick. But when you're coming back up, um, that, the roll's reverse. So that's the inside stick and this is the outside. Now, what you've got is leading hands. You're leading it down when you lead back up. So when you're doing the Trooper by Iron Maiden, and you see Nico McBrain do it and uh, all that sort of stuff. It's a right hand lead. But what starts to happen is that um, you can actually change lead hands. There's two ways to do it. Uh, you can actually put um, in a double tap at the end. That's where paradiddles are king. Paradiddle, so you get paradiddle, paradiddle, paradiddle. You see, going all the way down. Paradiddle, paradiddle, and the double tap changes the lead hand. You see, going down and going up. The second way to do this is an odd number of strokes when you get to the end drum, whichever drum it is. Now, this is a this part here is a uh, seven-piece kit. Uh, but what happens is if you've got a five-piece kit or just a little four or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Whenever you get to the end of where you want to be, put in a third tap. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Hippopotamus for five. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. Hippopotamus, 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 hippopotamus. Come all the way down. Do the whole lot. So, one, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. You can do the Gina. Gina Lola Bridget, the 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 Gina Lola Bridget. Gina Lola Bridget. So. Then you've got shapes. If you've got an, uh, a star, hello star, if you're watching, uh, a star is one drum. A line has two points. can get polymetric, you see, um, because I'm playing a three there with a four there or whatever it is that you want to do. I was doing that the uh, other week. I did that on the show on Wednesday, I think. And there you go. So you've got all these angles, you see. You can work angles. And it's really just quite straightforward. I'm just using four. Uh, you've got a, a star meaning one drum, a line meaning two drums, a triangle meaning three drums, and a square meaning four being four drums, you see. So I could do a line between that. So what happens there is that you can get a lot of different things happening. Now this ties, I just did something then. Um, now, uh, where am I here? Tim, Tim Howell, you're not here to watch it. You sent me a message, you sent me your apologies before, but you asked me about Incubus and Jose Pasilis II. And um, one of the things you asked me about was, where is it again? Uh, Sick, sad, little world. So I checked it out and lo and behold, that's what he's doing. He's doing like a rock beat here. And he's using a line between the cymbal and the snare drum. So he's got this little shuffly thing. I've never heard that song before, but, but I do that a lot.
cool. There it is. That's Jose Pasillas. I don't know much about him. He's a Mexican drummer. He cites two favourite drummers as two of my favourite drummers, uh, Herb Alexander from Primus and Stuart Copeland from The Police. So terrific stuff. I'll, I'll delve into him a little bit more. But you also asked me about megalomaniac moving right along, and I'll be coming back to the tom-toms in a bit. But what actually goes on is with that megalomaniac song, um, one of the things when you're learning songs quickly, let's say, um, you know, like here's 20 songs, have them ready by Sunday and all that. And you think, do you want me to play them just like the album? Bloody hell, you know, all that sort of stuff. But one of the main things is getting the skeleton, seeing it's Halloween. Hang on a second. <laughs> okay. And um, what happens is that um, you get the skeleton of it, you see. Now, with Megalomaniac, what it is, it's a calypso beat. Okay, so ba da ba da ba ba da ba da ba for the verse. So it'll be a rock calypso, if you like. Boom, boom. So on. But then in the chorus, he adds a second bar. So it's like... There you go. There's megalomaniac, basically. In the middle section, there's... Four on the floor with a, a snare drum hit on the and after the four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. And then there's another little bit where it goes straight rock, but then bang, I've got the song in a, in a few seconds, you know, just by listening. And there's some songs out there that you can, you, once you know your beats, you know what they are, like the difference between a four on the floor beat and a twist beat and all this sort of biz. Um, you can actually learn a song at the same pace as you're listening to it, okay? And um, one of the, the songs that I give my students all the time in the early days is the Beatles' We Can Work It Out because it's straight. It just goes... Uh, try and see it my way. Then it goes... Um, uh, uh, we can work it out. We can work it out, life is very short, and there's no time for fussing and walking. And you got the song down, there it is, very sectionalized, fantastic stuff. And that's what happens with things when I get, you know, sort of stump the drummer uh, and all that, which I love, don't get me wrong, but what happens with that is that if I'm going to, um, uh, you know, do this kind of thing, I've got to be on the ball. I've got I to know my calypsos. I've got to know the difference between a calypso and a 3-2 clave. I've got to know the nuances if I'm going to take a 3-2 clave into a, you know, like a New Orleans rhythm. All the differences, you know, you swing it up, you do whatever you want. But that's one of those things. I'll, I'll go back to Jose again um, for that little beat for the, what was the name of the tune again? Six Sad Little World. So you've got a normal rock beat. Line. Back to the angles. And what I'm doing is I'm putting the hi-hat in on the um, two and four there. It doesn't make it exactly incubus, but it's, it's the same kind of spirit of the thing, see? So yeah. When I was in the Essendon City Brass Band, there was a, a song there called Fascinating Drums. It was a, even an old chart then, 30 years ago. And um, going back to tom movement and all that, what happens is there was, there was a specific thing written and it was essentially uh, high tom, mid tom, high tom, mid tom, 16th notes. So um, 
what you've got is... But there's always that little curl, like that, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, oh, out of the way, let's come back. And I've seen other drummers do it, and that they're, they're tying themselves up and all that. And sometimes you've got to work it out like a, a, a problem, like uh, how do I do this for the pagola? You know, kind of, I've got to go up to Bunnings, and I, what do I need? I need to get that little bit of wood there and the little joint apart. The pagola! Anyway, what it is, is that you've got... How do you work out that problem? Well, leading hands, you see. So if I was to sort of go left, right, left, left, paradiddle, but with a left hand start, go down there, right, left, right, right, then I'm back up to the left. Beautiful. Problem solved. Now what happens with that? I hope you did ask me that question, Daniel, because I'm spending a few minutes on it, <laughs> is that you can also have different angles. Um, I'm going to do a little thing here, diagonals. I've seen it on the... I've, I've been doing this... In, I, I wrote a... Um, it, was, it was in my grade two drum set manual oh, back about 24 or 5 years ago. And, um, but then I've seen it on the YouTube. The Crossfill. <laughs> the Crossfill. I will show you how to do the cross fill for 24 payments of 9.99. Okay, so there you go. But I'm going to give it to you for fucking free. There you go. So you've got a diagonal. You've got the right hand doing this. The left hand doing this. Hill Caesar. Sapper routine, 1994. <laughs> Put them both together. You got six things, six, six little beats. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can think of it like triplets if you want. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a. Turn back. You get this. Wax on, wax off. Yes, grasshopper. <laughs> it is Halloween. All right. What happens, getting around the drums, what happens if I put in a double tap? You've got the overall thing there, and I'll double. Double. So do you see, you can get quite complex things, but sometimes from two just simple things put together. Because what I'm really doing is just double, single, double, single, double, mix it up. There you go. So that's that bit there. I hope you asked for it because I just did a whole bit on it. Anyway, there you go. I hope you got something out of it. And that was with Jose as well for you, Tim Howell. Jose Pasilas II, Calypso. He's Mexican. And um, no wonder some of his beats are Calypso and it's from that whole region, you know, that kind of thing. Calypso comes from Trinidad and Tobago, and, um, which is not far away from Mexico and Cuba. And there you go. So you can sort of see the influence. I learned a little bit of that. Now I'm off to the land of Hendrix here. And Mitch Mitchell, Jimi Hendrix's drummer. Um, Marcus 
Das der Moinen. You have asked me about that, and um, I'm going to try and rejig my uh, thingamajigger here, if I possibly can. And there it is there. And what I've got to do here, I've actually set something up with my metronome here. And um, Handy, Andy Baker, you've uh, actually chimed in with fire. Okay, Jimi Hendrix is fire and all that. Now, that's a very interesting song because so many people screw it up. I remember screwing it up when I was a kid trying to learn it with my little school band mates and all of that. Mitch Mitchell doing drum and bass back in the 60s. That kind of thing like that and all that. It should be the reverse thing. Mitch Mitchell was there with all the, the everything that was coming up in the time, and that's how drum and bass came around. You just uh, ratcheted it all up. Bam. All that sort of business. But the big thing about Mitch Mitchell, he was very jazz-influenced. His favourite drummers were the aforementioned, um, even with Ginger Baker uh, the other week, uh, Elvin Jones and all the jazzers of the day. Um, he started young. He actually uh, was a child actor. How's that? I um, found that out. And um, one of the things that he did was on the weekends as a kid, he would work in Jim Marshall's drum shop, Jim Marshall being Marshall Amps and all that. So what would happen is that he ended up being a bit of a, a gun, well, young gun, and his first gig was... Um, oh, he played with a few different bands, but his first main gig was Georgie Fame and the Blue Fames. And then from there, he hooked up with Hendrix through Chas Chandler, the manager and all that. And next thing, history was made. One of the things when he was early, um, when the Who were looking for um, a replacement for their first drummer, Doug Sandon, before they found Keith Moon, they were using a young Mitch Mitchell on some of the sessions. So how's that? It's all wrapped up. And one of the things about that is that when I think about the 1960s, I think of pairs you know, that sort of thing. I think of a lot of pairs, okay? Um, a couple of nice pairs is Keith Moon and uh, Mitch Mitchell were both crazy in their way. Keith Moon was crazier. And then in the 60s, the other two big drummers was Ringo with the Beatles and Charlie Watts with the Stones. And they were of a similar ilk. They were sort of, you know, more straight ahead than crazy Mitch and crazier Keith. And then you go into the 70s and everyone seemed to be thinking of, are you Bonham or Pace? Are you Pace or Bonham? You know, that kind of thing. There's always pairs, pairs everywhere, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what goes on with that. Now, with Mitch Mitchell, he, he was, um, Hendrix loved his improvisatory style and all that sort of business. If I was going to be super critical, one of my favourite albums is the Band of Gypsies album with um, uh, Buddy Miles on drums. And that's a tour de force. That was really rock solid. Every now and again, like me, Mitch Mitchell could go, oh, I think I just did a lick too far or something like that or whatever. But um, nevertheless, it was brilliant stuff, you know, that kind of thing. And Fire is, um, that you've asked me for, um, Andy and Marcus, is one of those ones where it's dead set tricky in the sense that, People think, ba bow. It's like, one, two, three, four, ba bow. No. The first crash is on four. So it'll be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four, one, two. And what I've done here, can you hear that? Ba da ba da. Ba da ba da. Four, one, two. that four one two three four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and four and one and two and three and four and one and There it is there, you see. So that's the thing about fire. You've got one, two, three, four, one, 
two, three. Four and one and two, three. Four, one, two, three. Four and one and two, three. And four and one, two, And there you go, that's fire, you see. So if you can work that out really quickly, what happens is you've got a fairly tricky song down, and that comes back all the way to working out your beats and knowing your songs and knowing your syncopations, you see. Wunderbar, there you go. I've got a few little notes here. I think I've said them all, hang on. Um, he's ranked as, Mitch Mitchell is ranked as the eighth greatest drummer of all time, according to Rolling Stone. Fantastic. And did you know that Mitch almost got the gig, Andrew Marshall, to play with ELP, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, because Hendrix and Keith Emerson were getting together and it was going to be called Help, Hendrix, Emerson, Lake and Palmer. So there was talk of that, but Carl Palmer actually got the gig and uh, all of that sort of business. So there you go. And I've said all the other things. Oh, Pretty Things. He was in a band called The Pretty Things too. I missed out on that. What else have I done? Tim Howell, Incubus, I've done that. Jose Pazilas the second, Megalomaniac, I've done that. Syncopation, uh, Calypso accents, and on two and four. Six Sad Little World. Boom. <laughs> Tom, I've done Trooper, Stephen Tocci. Handy, you also asked me about um, Hot for Teacher, but I did that the other week. But um, that's all right. See, what that is, is off a left foot lead. And um, that was the Ginger Baker thing. You get your left foot going. Heavy metal um, hi-hat, really. Left foot. And... There it is there. You see, so that's uh, a little bit of that. I had fun doing that. As, there you go. Andrew Marshall, symbol rundown. I've done that. T Daniel Elk, maybe Tom Movement. I think I might have been dreaming. I don't know. Marcus, Mitch Mitchell, Fire, Purple Haze I was going to do. All right. That's very quite, that's quite simple. I've, there's a little thing um, with uh, two and two is what I call it. And it's a two-bar phrase with a two-beat fill in at the end. So you get one, two, three, and four. One, two, fill in. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. And that's a common thing. I'll do that real quick. I just saw that. I'm just going through my notes. And I think I've done everything. What have I got? I'm actually on time for... <whistles> that's very good. So what it is, it is... <laughs> Halloween. That's right. And I'm doing this uh, the day before my mate Shag Malone is um, drumming for Phantom Panda Bow Wizard Master Smasher at the Bombay Rock tomorrow. That's what's going on. And I turn this back on. That's right. And I'm going to close off the show. With a bit of creepy Halloween stuff.
out of here. I hope you enjoyed that. Scary. I don't know. Crappy, maybe. <laughs> anyway, my name is Chris Quinlan. Welcome to Melbourne Muso's Face Chook Live. I'm done. There you go. I'm going to do a bit more preparation for Shagger tomorrow. And I hope I can see you there. Bombay Rock. I think we're on about 10-ish. But they get there early because there's two stages worth of bands for Halloween Saturdays. Please, shameless plugging and all of that sort of business. So what I'm going to do now is unplug. I hope you got something out of it. I hope I've gone over everything. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who asked questions. Andrew Marshall, Daniel Elg, I think. Marcus, Andy, Tim Howell, Stephen Tocci. All that sort of business. I hope I did it justice. I hadn't, hope I didn't blow it all. And I'm out of here. So take care and I will see you next week. Oh!